when we're building our applications, we all want a smooth developer experience and anything that interrupts that process that can take us out of the flow state uh, can be a real hindrance on what we're trying to do. When we're building, we need to be in that focus mode. And the last thing we want is to be in flow state and have something stop that process. Let's say we're building our application. And in this case, we are building this beautiful login form, right? And we're working on our application. We add the form in, we sign in because as we're building, we want to test our own application. And anytime we submit this form, we call the create email password session method. Now we're using AppRite. So this is an AppRite method with the web SDK. It hits a certain API endpoint and we log in, everything seems to work fine. Now we don't quite like the functionality. So what we do is we delete the session, we log out, and then we try it again. And we all know as developers, rather than measure twice and cut once, we just cut a bunch of times, right? So we just like to iterate on the process and see if we can brute force our way in. Now on the 10th request, we're still in flow state, but all of a sudden we see this error in the console. We got rate limited here, right? So every endpoint within AppRite has certain rate limits, at least the post request, anything outside of a get request usually has some kind of rate limit. And each endpoint has different limits set. So in this case, the limit was 10 requests per hour. And this is a good thing because if a user is trying to log in more than 10 times or create more than 10 sessions, they're usually doing something malicious. So we wanna stop that, right? So this is a good thing that this is happening, but in that development process, this is a problem. So we would prefer to not have this issue when we're building and not take us out of our flow state. Other endpoints that might have this issue are the create document method. So this calls a certain endpoint. And in this case, it's a limit of 120 requests per minute. Again, in a normal application, you probably wouldn't send more than 120 post requests per minute, but we're developers, we do things that don't necessarily make sense. And it's out of that normal scope of how someone would use our application. So we want a solution for this and we want to have more control and flexibility to not have to run into these issues as developers. We've announced dev keys and this allows us to bypass rate limits and cores errors in the development process when we're using client SDKs. So the web SDK, for example, when we're using those SDKs, we want to be able to avoid these so we have full flexibility and not be limited because we hit a certain endpoint too many times. So this gives us more control and we're able to avoid this limitation. Now, how do you use dev keys and how do you create them? When you're in your console, you can create a dev key next to that API keys tab. So it's going to be in your console. You would create it just like you would an API key. You set a limit on it. So you want to make sure that it expires after one, seven or 30 days. Ideally it's short lived and you get that key and you can now use this on the client side. So within the client SDK, whenever you initiate your client SDK, where you set your endpoint, your project ID, and perform all these configurations here, you can now add in your dev key. And this is what bypasses everything and gives you full control. Now, one thing I wanted to know about dev keys is that when you're using them, you are technically taking off those safeguards, right? Because those rate limits are there for a reason. They're there to protect you. When you're using dev keys, they're no longer there. So you want to make sure you never use these in production. You want to make sure you never accidentally push that code. And ideally that token is short lived. So if you do happen to do that, hopefully it expires before anything can happen to your website.